This is a quote from Charles Spurgeon that I think is very powerful. The same sun which melts wax hardens clay, and the same gospel which melts some persons to repentance hardens others in their sins. One thing that will take a person from taking in pain and becoming a harder person or a softer person is God. Without God, you will be you will continue to be hardened by anything that comes your way. And people think this is a good thing. A lot of people believe that we just need to be tougher and tougher and, and that's what we need. But with God, you will become softer as these things happen to you. And this is a good thing because without a softened heart, you will never be accepted by God. But it is also God who softens the heart. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 6, the prophet Elijah was with the king of Israel and they were being attacked by a band of Aramean raiders. One thing people know about war is war can cause people to become the most gruesome and vile killers. People can really be turned into monsters through war. I was watching a little clip of a movie um, yesterday, the Auschwitz Report. You know, just kind of going through some of the things that, that people went through during Holocaust. And, you know, it's crazy that a lot of those um, German soldiers were, were people who lost people too. And this is what really twisted them to be so evil and so cruel. And war can do that to you. But in 2 Kings chapter 6, the prophet Elisha had prayed to God for help doing this war. And they were able to blind their enemies. And then the king of Israel was able to capture his enemies. So here he had these Aramean um, raiders all surrounded. He had them captured. And, and but he asked Elijah, so okay, is it time to you know let's take them out, man? These guys were trying to kill this man. You know, um, just knowing how war goes, I'm sure they've already lost some people, you know, family members. So there's a lot of there's a lot of pain there. But Elijah says, no, do not kill them. As a matter of fact, feed them. And what they did was they prepared a big feast for these people. And after they fed them, what happened was is the um, Aramean raiders left and they never came back again to attack. And you know what? If they would have went ahead and killed them off, you know what? This would have just started, start, it would have kept this cycle of war going and, and things would have got worse and worse. I'm not saying this is always the right thing to do. Sometimes, you know, there's some people, you know, sometimes a roast needs to be stomped out. You see this in the Bible too. There, there are times where God commands people to take out these people because there's some people that are, that are, are wicked to the core and they've already sold their souls, so to speak. But what gave Elisha this power to make this decision to soften himself during a time of war is only the power of God. You know, we can't do this on our own. And I just remember, um, you know, when I was living a life of crime, I was a career criminal in and out of jail, went to prison, was in the streets, and I would get in fights. And every fight I would get into, it would make me harder. Every time I went to jail, it would make me harder. It would make me become more and more ruthless. And this would build in me more and more to where I cared less. You know, I would, you know, if I would get in a fight, I would say, okay, well, next time I'm not going to, I'm not going to give them any kind of chance to, you know, I'll stomp their head and what, you know, you become more and more ruthless. But this same pain that can harden you can also soften you. It's like the same sun that melts wax can harden clay. And then God revealed himself to me in a way that I couldn't deny anymore. It was just too many coincidences and it caused me to think in a new way. And I saw that there was a God. And although I, I now knew there was a God and the fear of God was in me, I still had a lot of um, habits that I still hadn't broken yet. I still had this atheistic way of thinking. I still had much to learn about my theology, so I, I wasn't quite, quite straightened out. So I was still, you know, getting into a few fights and I was still drinking. And I, although I was falling on my knees and praying for forgiveness and and um, I was seeking God, I was still making some mistakes. And then one of the worst situations happened to me. I got in a fight one night, and then the next day, because I was still an alcoholic, I fell asleep drunk in front of a store. And somebody came with a tire iron and hit me four times in the head, bust my head open. So I was put inside of a helicopter because they didn't think I was gonna make it, and they took me to the hospital.
I remember the police coming and asking me, like, you know, do you want to press charges? And I was like, no, you know, I don't want to press charges. But the one thing that changed about me was there was no anger in me after this was over. I wasn't thinking about revenge. All I wanted to do was forgive this person. And this is what changed once I knew that there was a God. I knew there was a God and I knew all the things that I've done wrong and all that he's forgiven me for. And I just couldn't hold on to this anger anymore. And I wasn't mad, I wasn't angry at this person. I wasn't thinking about revenge like I used to think. And you know, the older me, I would have been hunting for this, this guy. But it had, my heart had changed and I wasn't thinking about causing him any pain at all. This is only from the power of God and understanding all that God has forgiven me for. In Ezekiel 36 and 26, we hear the work of God in a believer as he um, sends his Holy Spirit to dwell in them. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And this is what happened with me. And then later on, uh, and, and then in the next verse, he says that I will give you a new spirit and cause you to walk in my statutes. So knowing that this is the power of God and not from me in any way, it humbles me. It gives me nothing to put my, my pride in, but it also tells me who to lead other people to. Don't look to yourself. If you want if you want to stop being hardened by all the things that happen, people stabbing you in the back, things going wrong in your life, being cheated on, getting into fights, going to jail, these things are going to continue to harden you and lead you to destruction until you start seeking for God. If you seek for God, you know that it was God that put that urge to seek for him in you. So be humble and know that that was God's calling. And as you seek for him, as you fall on your knees and repent, this is a good sign that you have received the Holy Spirit and you're going to see changes in your life. But remember, this starts with repentance. This starts with belief, faith in God, in his son, who is sent to die for the sins of the world. Something to think about.